What's your Mount Rushmore, your top four back exercises to get jack, stacked, succulent, and dense? Hell yeah. There you go. I got it. Jack, stacked, succulent, dense. <clears throat> the holy quad. Quad. What is it? Not trilogy. Quadro, quadrology. Uh, top four back exercises. Well, I would obviously say, obviously, weighted pull-ups, deadlifts. Um, I like heavy dumbbell rows for sure. Um, other than that, I don't really need, I don't honestly, I don't do too many back exercises. I think that those ones alone, really all you need. Um, anytime I'm in the gym, if I'm, like I said, I do upper lower. If I ever do back stuff, it's going to be, I'm just going to bang out some pull-ups. I'll grab the heaviest dumbbells and hit some rows. If I do deadlifting, I just consider that like the only back movement I do for the most part. Um, I guess just, I would say just for the high volume, I would just put like lap pull downs on there just because it's something that you can get a, you can easily get or yeah, any of the cable. I'll just say any cable pull because it's the best thing you can do for just getting like ultra pump. And yeah. I get people all the time calling me out like, oh, but you said that it's about the weight. It's not about the pump and the mind muscle. Gonna... So yes, asshole. How many times do I ever got to say it? Yes. Lifting bigger and heavier weights. That's like going to be the key. You know what I mean? Like trying to progress on weighted pull-ups or rows or deadlifts. Like that's the freaking, that's the cake. But I'm never going to say that like getting a pump in terms of like warming up, getting a flush or something to warm up or just like, all right, I just maxed out my deadlifts. I'm pretty crushed, but why don't I try to just, you know, crank out some wep- some reps up the wazoo, you know what I mean? High repetition sets. Like, I'm a huge fan of doing, uh, like, super high reps. And uh, I really do feel like it's – I know people say, like, it's just endurance and all that, but, like, for instance, like, triceps or, like, like lateral raises, like, sets of 100 just, like – a hundred. Yeah. So they can just get you so, um, and I don't care about the, I'm not saying a strict hundred. Doesn't matter. I'm talking, yeah. I'm talking about like, if I got good weight on there, you know, say like I'll put the full stack and I'll try to do the, the, the strictest reps I can. And when they break down, I'll, you know, I'll cheat it and I'll start to use my lats involved and I'll use sure. more and more lats. And if I can't do any more, drop it and then go back to like strict and, but yeah, that and then doing like lateral raises and then as it gets, you know, like your form break, you know, and you just start using a little shimmy to get them up or whatever. Like, get them up. Yeah. It's just crazy. I'm not saying that that's like a game changer, but I've started doing that like just for like one or two sets of workout. And I really do feel like it makes a difference. If nothing else, it makes you sore as shit, which I think at least in stills, like I had a good workout. So if nothing else, like I'm going to push my body to the limits. You also threw out dumbbell rows. I feel like less people are doing dumbbell rows these days. I don't know if you feel that to be the case. Now they're doing deficit Smith machine bent over rows. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Nobody does a dumbbell row. I don't know why. I used to do them like crazy, the crock rows and I also went crazy on like barbell rows, but I mean, with the, with the dumbbell rows, again, it's another movement where you can do as strict as form as you want, but you can keep progressing and the form can get a little looser and a little sloppier and that's okay. And then I, it's just so funny. I know exactly what people think because I've been uploading videos for 10 years and I see all these comments. So I know exactly every side of the spectrum of what people think. Yeah. So the heavier ones, so you're not getting any squeeze. You know what I mean? Like, wait, there's no zero reps were done. But it's like with 380 pounds. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, so yeah, I'm not getting a squeeze, but now but, we know with the but you're in, you're in the, with the length of position. Partials, with the yeah, exactly. stretch, it's like, now what are they gonna say? Because that's the most important thing. And like the stretch is insane, and you're even just getting that initial like uh, retraction, like that's all with 380 pounds per arm. That's more than enough. It's all you need. So if you get any sort of like this with that much weight, then you can strip half the weight, and it's what 190 pounds, which is still astronomical, and you can do a lot better. And then you can even strip half of that weight, you know, and then you got like a hundred pound dumbbell, and it will feel like a peanut, and. That's just one of those things that I discovered for myself. I know obviously people have been doing it forever, I'm sure. But for myself, I was like, holy 
pheasants. So if I load the dumbbell row up with 400 pounds and then I even just pick it up and then I strip 100 pounds off, that 300 pound dumbbell is going to feel so much easier than if you just warm up to the 300 pound dumbbell. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with yep. like um, squatting. What I used to do, I used to do this with everything with bench pressing and stuff. So we'll say for bench because I did do it a lot with bench. If I was going to go for a PR, say I'm going for a 500 pound bench. Something that I really like to do, and I stopped doing it. I don't know why, because it, there's a reason I did it so much. Was I would I would warm up normally, so you know I would do 405, whatever, 445, 475, or something, and then it's like you would go to 500. But instead of going to 500, I would put like 550 on or something like that, and just unrack it and just hold it, and then put it down, shake it for a bit, instantly strip the 50 pounds. Then some missions of pressing it back up, which is like supra maximal load. So same thing with squatting, just unrack a hundred. Be safe though, obviously. You know what I'm saying? Don't <laughs> don't put hundreds of more pounds on you can handle. But before you go for a PR, just unrack, you know, 50 to 100 more pounds more, like in the safeties or something. Just unrack it and hold it for a bit, put it down, strip the hundred pounds, and then pick it up. And it just it priming the nervous system. Uh, you know what else that worked really well for it was overhead press. Just unracking it and just, uh, mm. just getting just this kind of shrugging motion. And when you rack it back, it just feels like a peanut. And perception is everything. Like when you first pick that weight up, how that weight first initially feels is going to dictate how that, you know what I mean? It's going to dictate that fucking rep and that aggression that you use towards it and that energy that you put towards it. I'll tell you something right now. If I pick a bar up and it feels heavy as shit, I'm probably not going to hit the rep. You know what I'm saying? But if I pick it up, it's, yeah, I'll probably hit it. And it could be the same way. It's just how it feels in my hands. For sure. I heard you say something like, I like the placebo effect. A placebo effect works even when I know it's a placebo effect. So it, it kind of <laughs> relates to what you were just saying. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I th think that that was like, not to be, you know, freaking Johnny scientist or I'm pretty sure that there was some sort of study or something that showed that even when people were taking a placebo effect, it still worked. I think that's just because the slight, when they knew that it was a placebo, it still had an effect, a slight effect. And I think that's just because like maybe deep down, you're not, you know what I mean? Like you're not sure. You're not a hundred percent sure if it does something or does nothing, but yeah, dude, if I can take like just, pills of you know flour and sugar then and it works then that why wouldn't you do that you know what i'm saying anything to trick yourself to feel like you're stronger or whatever bigger or anything like that i feel like that's also like for gyms like i i will always go to the gym that has a good mirror you know what i mean <laughs> there's some gyms that have like the narrow mirrors which i think the girls like it makes them look slimmer but if I'm at a gym that has a nice wide mirror that makes you look bigger than you really are, I'm fucking feeling good. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to lift better and I'm probably going to perform better. Because I'm like, fuck, I'm looking jacked. You know what I'm saying? And then you bust out the phone and take a picture. You're like, wait a second, I look like shit. God, this mirror must be really good. But like, all these things, dude, the, it's the fucking mind, man. The mind, it's it literally is everything. <laughs> No. If you believe that you're strong as a freaking buffalo, you're going to probably be better than if you think that you're weak as a daffodil. You know what I'm saying? I've said this to pl plenty of people, too. It's like, dude, your mindset, your perception, it's everything. If you wake up and think and you're telling yourself you feel like shit, like you're probably going to have a bad workout, you're probably going to have a bad workout. But if you like, if you just think to yourself or tell yourself, like, I'm going to hit a PR in a minute right? You might not hit a PR on a big lift or something, but one way or another, you're going to fucking hit a PR because you're putting it out in the universe. Self-fulfilling prophecy, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just put it out. If you just put it out there, it's probably going to happen. Oh, I'm yeah. feeling like shit. I'm feeling weak. I'm, I don't know if I'm going to be able to lift well today. That's probably what, don't put it out there. That's what's going to happen, you know? 